Hey, what's new and exciting? It's Kevin O'Shaughnessy here, and today I'm going to step away from the guitar lessons and uh, do another music production video. I don't do these very often, but as many of you know, I do produce my own music and sometimes music for other people. And uh, every once in a while, you know, something comes up and, and makes me think, oh yeah, you know, this is probably something that I should share. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think that most mix engineers, both amateur and professional, mix their songs backwards. Uh, if if you do follow music production uh, like I do and you follow it on YouTube, uh, you probably see all kinds of videos and this, oh, here's the new mix tutorial and here are the steps to get a great mix. And, you know, almost all of them start with the drums. And that's how I learned. Uh, I didn't have a lot of formal training when it came to uh, mixing. Music theory, yes. Uh, composition, yes. Uh, MIDI sequencing, sure. But when it came to recording and mixing, um, I got a job in a recording studio and I did a lot of other stuff with uh, trial and error. I uh, bought a few books, practiced a lot, made a lot of mistakes, and here we are. And one of the things that I noticed over the years was that it always seems like these engineers are doing it backwards because on the one hand, they'll tell you that the vocal is the most important part Yet it's the last thing they try to put into the mix. So I thought, wow, you know what? What if we actually do this the other way around? What if we start with the vocal and build everything around that? And that's how I have been mixing songs now for years. And so real quick, uh, this is a very, very uh, almost overly simplistic mix of a song that uh, that I wrote years ago called Who Am I? And uh, several months ago, I did kind of a karaoke version of it, and I, I just bounced out some simplified tracks. I thought this would make a good one to experiment with for this video. And the first thing that I want to show you is just very quickly how I um, how I, I bust the various parts into subgroups. So what I have all the way down here, and I, I don't expect that you'll actually be able to read these labels down here, but this red fader here, this is the drums, but this is just the skin. So it's the kick, the snare, and the toms, and that's it. All the way down here in green is the high end information, and that's where I put my hi hat, my ride, and my overheads, so I can control them differently. Particularly if I have to automate fills, um, I find it a whole lot easier to come over to this fader and do the automation there, but it doesn't have any effect on the overhead tracks, and it saves me from having to, you know, uh, automate each tom hit or whatever, and because that's just kind of a pain. This way, I can just bring all the drums up and bring them all back down again, and it's it's a lot easier without crushing the overheads with compression either. I might compress the the skins differently than I would I would compress the cymbals and and now I have the flexibility to do that so that's why I split up the drums and the uh and the high-end stuff as a matter of fact I ripped that off from a guy named David Glenn um who I uh he he runs another channel here on YouTube I think he's got his own thing too I, I ripped that off from him um then I've got all the low end which in this case is just going to be the bass guitar but if I had some bass synths they'd go in here uh music that would be for guitars and keyboards that kind of thing vocals pretty obvious um and effects that's where I'd put all my delays and reverbs I'd bust all that stuff there and it gives me a little extra control if I had uh percussion I would do that too I'd put I'd put a separate fader for the for the percussion here as well and and that's how I how I bounce that out but let's get on to the meat of this video, which is um, which is is mixing the song, right? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is you see that uh, aside from a couple of uh, of groups here, um, this is a, a snare bus and a and a kick bus because I've got like some samples layered in with the kick and the snare and a couple of things. So what uh, what I usually start with, like I said, is uh, I'm just gonna go through the chorus here and. I, the first thing I do is I turn all of the faders down except for for the groups and the first thing I pull up is the vocal and so uh, we'll do that and I'll I'll pull it up until it goes about you know minus six on the meter here and obviously you'll hear what that sounds like so we'll just pull this up Am I? Who So now I got a level. It's about minus six on the meter. It's just running about halfway up. And so at this point right now, of course, most mix engineers will tell you, don't ever mix in solo. It doesn't make any sense. It's good to find problems, but you can't do a mix like that. And I agree with that to an extent, except for the fact that the vocal is supposed to be the most important thing. And so when I'm listening to this, um, 
I, I hear a couple of things that I want to correct, and I want to correct them right away. And in this case, it's just going to be I'm going to drop an EQ in there, and I'm going to um, I'm going to pull out some of the low end. I was belting this into a uh, dynamic microphone, so I'm going to pull some of that out. So I'm going to run this again. Who am I? So there we go. You can hear how that kind of cleans that up a little bit. Now I might also throw on some compression at this point, but generally not a lot. But I want to get it to sit in a particular level. Uh, in this case, um, you know, like I said, I'm just looking for it at about this minus six range down here, uh, which is you know right in between like two thirds and halfway up the meter. Because of course, all of this stuff is going to feed the master fader, and I, you know, all of these things as I start to add stuff, um, you know, it's it's just going to start. Uh, clip in this and I'm going to lose all my headroom. So I actually start out with pretty low levels. So the next thing, see now compositionally speaking, I tend to think of this as a composer. And, you know, when I was in, in uh, theory classes and composition classes, you know, the, the most important thing they drilled into us, the most important relationship was between the melody and the bass. And so uh, the next thing I'm going to bring up is the bass guitar. Who am I? Okay, so now I've got what, you know, basically a pretty decent balance right here. And I'm what I want to do now is I want to get the vocal and the bass to fit well together. Now I'm uh, assuming that I've I've done the, the bit of EQ and compression that I'm going to do on on the vocal and I get that to sound the way I want it to. Now I'm going to do the bass, but I'm going to EQ the bass so that it really fits in with that. So I'm going to add a little EQ on there. A couple of things I, I probably clean up. Let me see what I can do here. There, now I've got them, in my opinion, I think they fit a little better. Let me turn off those plugins and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Who am I? I'll brighten up the voice. Who am I? Clean up the bass. Now you'll notice that I'm not going to like great detail here. I'm basically just kind of cleaning out some of the ugly stuff and just getting those two things to sit together. Now, once you get the melody and the bass, or I should say, once I get the melody and the bass together, now I'm going to listen for, I'm going to, I'm going to put in the kick and the snare drum and I'm going to get those two uh, to fit in with what I've got already. So the first one I'm going to do is the kick. Here it comes.
right, so that kick sounds a little woofy to me, so I'm gonna try to clean that up now. Am I So that's cleaned up. I've also got a sample here. Now I'm gonna start gradually fading that in as well. Now, one thing I should point out is because I've got both the recorded kick and the sample running through a bus, what I'm looking at is is the level of the bus, and I'm also listening to uh, to what all three of these parts sound like together. But I'm I'm keeping an eye on this level here. Again, I want it somewhere around that minus six thing. And once I get these three elements together, I'll show you what it looks like on the master fader. I, who am I? Now, if we take this down to the end, you'll see that we've still got a good amount of headroom to add the other instruments. Cool. Now we'll come over here and we will add the snare. Now in this one, um, I actually, I kind of I blew it when recording the snare on, on this. I, I decided to do some kind of weird thing where instead of miking the bottom of the snare, I, I miked the side of the snare and it, it really didn't work very well at all. So I also added a sample in here to kind of thicken this up a little bit. But let's, we'll, we'll put in the snare and see what it sounds like from there. Hey. Okay, so because that's a sample, I can get away with doing more shelf filtering. I know uh, there's plenty of engineers out there who do that on a live snare too, but like I said, I kind of screwed up recording that snare. So I wanna be a little bit more precise about what I'm boosting and cutting. So now I'm just gonna kind of get that snare to, to sit a little bit more happy and, uh, and, and see if we can get that to fit. Okay, so you see now, right? We've got it, we've got basically a song, right? We've got the melody, we've got our bass, which has our, our harmonic foundation, and we've got enough rhythm between the kick and the snare that it should start to feel like a pretty like a pretty decent mix, right? I've done a little bit of cleaning up, and ordinarily I'd put in some compression and such too, uh, but I'm assuming you guys know what that is and, and how to use it, and I'm just kind of trying to speed through this video a little bit, because obviously mixes can take hours, and I'm trying to get an idea of this and uh, give you an idea of, of my process in this in rough, relatively a few minutes. 
So uh, what I would do next is then start filling out the kit a little bit. I'm gonna add the overheads. I'm gonna add the, the in this case, the hi-hat. Um, I'd also go through and find places for the toms and the, and the ride cymbal and stuff like that and, and start to get a little bit more of a blend of the drum. So here come the overheads. just filtered a tiny little bit of, of woofy stuff out of the out of the hi-hat a little bit there. And again, I would go through and I would treat this. But now, listening to this the way it is, again, you know, it's a song. You hear the you can hear the bass, you can hear the drums, and you got the vocal. And the vocal is still right up in front, which is where we want it for most kinds of music, right? Let's listen to that again. I'm also, I'm also gonna fix this loop a little bit too because it's actually supposed to be all in four four. It, it's not really in uh, some odd seven beat time signature. There we go. That'll that'll fix that. So right there, now I've got a pretty good mix, and I don't have to worry about carving out room for the vocal. It's already there. Okay. There's also some backup vocals too, but I'll get to those in just a minute. Um, so now the next thing, uh, really one of the last things to do here is going to be the guitars. Now that could be anything that next you could have keyboards, but now I'm going to sort of focus on the, the, um, the most critical, um, uh, musical element, which in this case, it's really just two. It's a, it's a left and right guitar track is, uh, is the only thing that's, uh, to put in there for music. There's no synthesizer parts or anything like that. So, uh, that's going to sound like this. I did it again. Haha. <laughs> that should be this probably. Let me just check here. Sorry, this loop is just driving me crazy. Let me uh Oh, that's why. Uh what do I want here? What do I really want? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I went too far. That's what I did. It belongs there. Okay, so sorry about that. Uh, now let's go back and check that again. I think I've got a pretty decent level for the guitars. Let's check it out. So now the last thing that's in there is there are a couple of, uh, there's some backup parts in there. So let's pull that in. All right, so that's not bad right there, but I think I can bring out those vocals a little bit. So I'm gonna use a little EQ and see what I can do here.
right? And so that's the basic idea, right? So I start with the vocal, I clean it up a little bit. In this case, I just threw in a little EQ, uh, but I, I clean it up a little bit. If I need compression, I'll add that too. And then I'll add the bass and I'll get the bass to sound good with the vocal. And then I'll get the kick drum and then I'll do the snare drum and then I'll fill in the rest of the kit. Then I'll fill in the musical elements and then some of the backup vocal elements. If I had percussion, I would do that next. And then I would start carving out places for the vocal or for the uh, all of the effects vocal reverb, drum rooms, that kind of thing. I might go back and forth in solo and such like that, but notice that, I don't know if you were noticing any of these faders down here, these submasters, but there's so much headroom left. I could get to a point like, you know, once I fill, once I've put in everything else, um, you know, maybe I could, I could goose the whole mix up a little bit before putting on any sort of bus compression or, or, you know, uh, uh, bus effects and things like that, you know, EQ, all that kind of thing. So, um, but to me, this makes so much more sense. Like compositionally speaking, you work on the thing that's the most important thing first, which is the melody. And then you work on the bass. So uh, instead of doing the drums and then trying to fit your vocals in at the end, start with the most important thing. So anyway, I hope you found that useful. Uh, I'll probably have more guitar lesson videos for you uh, starting next week. But for those of you who are into music production, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's useful. If you got any questions, hit me up in the comments if you like it. Uh, make sure to hit that that like button and let me know. And if you've got any issues, uh, if there's any any uh, thoughts you have on recording and mixing, leave those in the comments below. I can address those in future videos. In the meantime, good luck making music. Have fun making music. And I hope this works for you. And I am Kevin O'Shaughnessy, and I will see you in the next video.